Senate Bill 543, a bill for an act relating to prohibitions for certain products, creating new provisions, and amending ORS 459.995. Be it enacted by the people of the state of Oregon. Section 1. As used in sections 1 to 4 of this 2023 Act. 1. Food vendor means a business, organization, or other person that sells prepared food or offers prepared food for sale to the public, including, but not limited to, a store, shop or other sales outlet, a restaurant, a delicatessen, or a cart, truck or other vehicle from which the business, organization, or other person sells prepared food or offers prepared food for sale. 2. Foodware container includes bowls, plates, cups, lids, clamshells, or other containers or any other items used for serving or containing prepared food, including takeout food and leftovers from partially consumed meals prepared by food vendors. 3. Perfluorophyll or polyfluorophyll substance means a substance included in a class of fluorinated organic chemicals containing at least one fully fluorinated carbon atom. 4. A. Polystyrene foam container means a cooler or foodware container that is A. Made of a polystyrene plastic foam B. Made for the purpose of serving, containing, preserving or consuming prepared food, and C. Ordinarily used once for a purpose described in subparagraph B. Of this paragraph before being discarded B. Polystyrene foam container does not include A. A cooler or other container that is made of a polystyrene foam, that is intended for more than one use and that is enclosed by a solid shell B. A tray or container used solely to store, ship or otherwise transport an ingredient or food product that is not prepared food, or C. Polystyrene plastic material, other than polystyrene foam packaging peanuts, that is used solely for packing or protecting other items during storage, shipping or other transportation. 5. Polystyrene foam packaging peanuts means loose fill material made of polystyrene foam used to protect items during shipping or other transportation. 6. A. Prepared food means food or a beverage that A. A food vendor prepares on the food vendor's premises or that another person prepares and provides to the food vendor for sale to the public, and B. An individual may consume immediately or without the need for further or additional preparation. B. Prepared food does not include meat, fish, eggs or produce, if the meat, fish, eggs or produce are raw and have not been prepared for immediate consumption. Section 2. A food vendor may not use a polystyrene foam container in selling, offering for sale, serving or dispensing prepared food to a consumer. Section 3. A person may not sell, offer for sale or distribute in or into the state polystyrene foam containers or polystyrene foam packaging peanuts. Section 4. A person may not sell, offer for sale, or distribute in or into the state a foodware container containing intentionally added perfluorophyll or polyfluorophyll substances. Section 5. The Environmental Quality Commission may adopt rules necessary to implement Sections 1 to 4 of this 2023 Act. Section 6. ORS 459.995, as amended by Section 15, Chapter 102, Oregon Laws 2022, is amended to read 459.995. 1. Except as provided in subsection 2 of this section, in addition to any other penalty provided by law. A. Any person who violates ORS 459.205, 459.270, 459.272, 459.386 to 459.405, 459.705 to 459.790, 4598.005 to 459.620, 4598.310 to 459.335, 459.860 to 459.975 or 6468.080, or any rule or order of the Environmental Quality Commission pertaining to the disposal, collection, storage, or reuse or recycling of solid wastes, as defined by ORS 459.005, or any rule or order pertaining to the disposal, storage, or transportation of waste tires, as defined by ORS 459.705, or any rule or order pertaining to the sale of novelty items that contain encapsulated liquid mercury, incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $25,000 per day for each day of the violation. B. Any person who violates the provisions of ORS 459.420 to 459.426 incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $500 for each violation. Each battery that is disposed of improperly is a separate violation. Each day an establishment fails to post the notice required under ORS 459.426 is a separate violation. C. For each day a city, county, or metropolitan service district fails to provide the opportunity to recycle as required under ORS 459.005, the city, county, or metropolitan service district incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $500 for each violation. D. Any person who violates the provisions of ORS 459.247, 1F, incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $500 for each violation. Each covered electronic device that is disposed of improperly is a separate violation. E. Any retailer that violates the provisions of ORS 459.825, 1, or, 2, B, or Section 3, Chapter 102, Oregon Laws 2022, incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $100 per day for each day of the violation. F. Any producer or renovator that violates the provisions of ORS 459.825, 1, or Section 3, Chapter 102, Oregon Laws 2022, incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $1,000 per day for each day of the violation. G. Any stewardship organization that violates the provisions of ORS 459.825, 2A, 459.827, 459.830 to 459.837 or 459.842 or sections 1 to 14, Chapter 102, Oregon Laws 2022, incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $1,000 per day for each day of the violation. H. Any food vendor that violates Section 2 of this 2023 Act incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $100 for each day of the violation. I. Any person that violates Section 3 or 4 of this 2023 Act incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $500 per day for each day of the violation. 2. Any product manufacturer or package manufacturer who violates ORS 459.650 to 459.665 or any rule adopted under ORS 459.650 to 459.665 incurs a civil penalty not to exceed $1,000 per day for each day of the violation. A violation of ORS 459.650 to 459.665 is not subject to additional penalties under subsection 1 of this section. 
3. Any civil penalty authorized by subsection 1 or 2 of this section shall be imposed in the manner provided by ORS 468.135. Section 7. Sections 1 to 4 of this 2023 Act and the amendments to ORS 459.995 by Section 6 of this 2023 Act become operative on January 1, 2025. Recognize Senator Janine Salman. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, breaking up is hard to do. But when a relationship is toxic, you must cut it free. Polystyrene is toxic to our grazing animals, to the fish off our coastal waters, and to the health of our bodies. Polystyrene doesn't magically disappear or biodegrade on its own. And the fact is that these single-use foodware products are just not being reclaimed in our recycle process. Products that have a negative forever impact on our planet, like polystyrene and PFAS, are harmful chemicals that build up in our bodies and our environment, and they should be eliminated. We can't recycle our way out of the plastics in our environment. We only recycle about 9% of all the plastic that we produce. So let's stop producing it at the levels we are in the first place. Yes, I am very passionate about this issue. Our growing reliance on plastics for convenience and packaging has been a leading focus of my work over the last few years, and I will continue to pursue policies that aim to achieve these goals. But don't just take my word for it. If you visit my legislative YouTube channel, you will see several slideshows that my office put together from hundreds of letters received by K-8 students in Oregon asking me to ban polystyrene. Students from Kotama Elementary in, in Hillsboro in my district and Beverly Cleary and Bridger Schools in Portland are asking us to protect their future by doing all that we can to ensure we protect, protect our animal life and make sure the environment is a healthy one. During the interim, I have committed to forming a work group of stakeholders to continue the discussion and explore environmentally friendly alternatives to polystyrene foodware for our restaurants and retail. We worked with stakeholders on the bill and both restaurants and grocers are officially neutral on this bill. Please take a look at the floor letter on your desk. I also really want to make this, uh, take this time and this, uh, this privilege of this moment to thank the committee members for their thoughtful questions, their comments, and their consideration of this policy. Senate Bill 543 passed out of the committee unanimously with a 5-0 vote. Nine cities across Oregon have already passed ordinances prohibiting polystyrene from foodware. Ashland, Eugene, Florence, Lincoln City, Medford, Milwaukee, Newport, Portland, and Silverton. It is time for a statewide solution. Colleagues, I urge your I vote for Senate Bill 543. Thank you. Discussion on the measure. Recognize Senator Robinson. Pardon me. Uh, SB 543 has problems like SB 569. I spoke against 569 and pointed out that it was a small requirement, but unconstitutional and wrong. Some other senators felt differently, and they thought it would improve access for some people. This bill has other excuses. It was pointed out that closed captioning might help children to read. Yes, it's true. The, the brief access children might have to restaurant closed captioning, mostly in sparse bars, and might actually have a a significant uh, impact on our children's ability to read, what with the schools so bad and all. But most importantly, it was most emphasized that it was a small requirement. There was only minimal work on the part of the restaurant. Some restaurants might actually be opposed to closed captioning, regardless of the time involved, because we just trampled on their rights. Here we go again. Another small requirement. We are now deciding what disposable containers restaurants may use. This bill also bans a lot of other useful products. There are alternatives, of course. Maybe it's not a big deal, they can use those, but again, this bill will trample on their rights. Why are restaurants using polystyrene containers? Obviously, because they prefer them to alternatives. Maybe cost. 
Maybe they feel their food presents better and looks better appetizing to in them. I don't know. We don't know. But we do know what we will, uh, we will further restrict restaurants' options with this bill. Colleagues, all of these requirements add up. Maybe if we work hard enough, the pizza restaurants that I referred to the other day will be in as bad shape as, <laughs> as the medical system. I guess that's uh, one way to fix the medical system. We just get rid of the efficiency in other industries, and it makes, <laughs> makes them look bad. I also note that we recently passed SB 545 to allow non-disposable containers in restaurants. Now we're eliminating certain types of disposable containers. Is the goal to eliminate single-use containers entirely? America was founded on the principles of freedom. Free enterprise has provided us with a wonderful quality of life. Single-use containers are one of those inventions which enhances our life with virtually no zero downsides. Littering, which is mentioned as a reason for passing this bill, is entirely a separate issue. We should not try to make people behave by eliminating their technology. Again, I encourage you to stand for freedom. Let's not pretend that the definition of freedom is forcing Oregonians to anything we think is good for them. Uh, please join with me voting no. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator. Recognize Senator Anderson. Thank you, Mr. President. My colleagues, I stand before you today as a former mayor of Lincoln City, and you've noticed perhaps from your floor letter that uh, Florence, Lincoln City, and Newport have already accomplished this task. Um, one primary reason is the photos on this floor letter. Um, we certainly enjoy having visitors to the coast um, if they would just take care of their uh, lunch and dinner containers. Um, they end up on our, the larger we, uh, beach, and then we're forced to uh, clean up. So I'm, I'm very supportive of this bill. Um, typically, I don't like uh, a reach by state with one policy. In this case, because of the numerous um, wording on different bills, I think we've found that it's now time to uh, have one statewide bill, uh, which this accomplishes and helps clean up our environment. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Recognize Senator Bonham. Thank you, Mr. President. It's not lost on me that, that work was done on this bill uh, to move some industry opposition from uh, significantly opposed to, to a neutral position. But at the same time, I, I want to echo uh, the good senator's comments from, from the Southwest Oregon's, ooh, sorry, from, uh, excuse me, from District 2, uh, concerns over the barriers to doing business in the state of Oregon. Uh, the cost of regulation, the cost. Of, I have no idea whether or not a restaurant owner went out and bought a five-year supply of these types of containers and is sitting on them. And we're going to all of a sudden potentially tell them that not only can they not use them anymore, but if they do, it's a potential fine, $100, $500. Like we're, we're going to punish people for having a freedom of choice. Uh, we disagree with their choice. We, we say that uh, we have other options that are better Historically, we've had other options that we've said, you can no longer do this, you can no longer do that. We've developed new technology, whether it was for presentation or quality of uh, extended life of the food, whatever it might be. But we went different directions. And now we're saying, well, actually, some of those old options that we had before that we said were bad are actually the preferred option now. Let's bring those back. Until we fix our recycling program, and, and everything doesn't just end up in a landfill. I, I don't know what virtue we're, we're truly holding dear other than to provide one more layer of regulation, one more burden on business, one more challenge to trying to make a living here in the state of Oregon. Um, it, it may be a noble endeavor to, to keep our beaches clean and, and to keep this uh, 
product that, that does have a, a really long, long, long life uh, from, from being a, a blight on our landscape. But, but again, I, I just feel like it is hard to do business in the state of Oregon. It's expensive to do business here. Uh, the few restaurants that have survived COVID uh, and in the government regulation and burdensome shutdowns and the costly shutdowns, uh, I, I just I wish them all the best and I wish them all the good fortune. And, and I, for one, don't want to be another vote to add pressure and burden to them. So I'll be voting no. Thank you, Senator. Senator. Under discussion, recognize Senator Linthicum. Thank you, Mr. President. The, um, to the bill. The, uh, the bill is, is overreach of, of the worst sort um, in terms of there's fines, you got to do this, you can't do that. And what you and I don't know, in fact, no, none of our colleagues here on the floor know is what alternatives might be available if we allow the free market to flourish. And we have put everybody into this little box. It's a narrow alley that they can act and respond in and can afford to respond in. And unfortunately, the horizon isn't wide enough to allow a thousand other ideas into the room. And what we're doing here is this ban on uh, polyfluoroalkyl substances which we have this acronym for PFAS's, um, are synthetic version of organofluorine chemicals. Now, organofluorine chemicals are called that because they're organic chemicals. And these organic chemicals, mostly um, they come from uh, oil, the oil industry and applications you know, uh, create water repellents and pharmaceuticals and refrigerants and all sorts of other chemical uses throughout our modern, highly technical industrial environment. But these compounds are, quote, to be extra feared, one, because people are sloppy, and I could go back again to uh, the heart is more important than the head because they're not sloppy because of how they're built. They're not sloppy because of how they're constructed. They're not sloppy because there's a long organic life to these carbon um, uh, products. People are sloppy with how they behave and react and respond at an individual level. So if they cleaned up after themselves on the beaches, the good senator from the coast would not have a problem with these. And so all of a sudden we're reaching for a technical solution when the real solution is inside man's own worldview, his own moral company and his own heart. And then the state of Oregon thinks that if we whip the individual small enough, if we force him into the corner, if we handcuff him or fine him, all of a sudden we'll have a compliant society, but it never actually works like that. These pollutants are also feared greatly because of their supposed um, uh, contribution, I'll call it, to global warming. How many of my colleagues here recognize that in California, the prior snowpack record was set in 1952 and currently California is on the verge of breaking that very record. So for all your global warming fears and all the fear mongering with regard to bioaccumulation, ozone depletion, do you remember the ozone hole? How come we don't hear about that daily anymore? The ozone depletion is one of the reasons these are feared, quote unquote. And we fear them because of a non-existent threat. The ozone layer is not disappearing from under us and we, um, from above us actually. And, um, and we actually have um, snowpack levels 
that are exceeding any snowpack levels that most of us have known, and all the kids who are afraid of global warming to Greta, Greta's gang, um, they'll come into the Senate, they'll testify at the Senate, and yet they have never ever seen a snowpack like this in their lifetime. And so it turns out we are making a mess out of a, out of a, a small pile of trash and it will be a mountain we will die on. Thank you for the time. Additional discussion? Seeing no discussion. Senator Solman, do you wish to close? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I will just say, just mention a few details, that January 1st, 2025 is when this policy will become in effect. Uh, currently, there are plenty of healthy alternatives. Many restaurants and retailers are already using them. Just check out our local Sassy Onion. Uh, they have, they're using their, uh, their very healthy um, options outside of their restaurant. But I also want to make sure that we know and are just really, costs are already coming to Oregonians. As we mentioned, we heard from um, the good senator from the coast, the coast, they're coming through cleanups and we're having to bear those costs. And also, as the senator from the home of Crater Lake has described, the ingredients of that container, that polystyrene container, um, there are health care costs to that that Oregonians are playing. Are, are, are having. I personally no longer would like to place my lasagna inside that container as it was described. We need to make sure that we're providing healthy um, alternatives for Oregonians, for their health, for, the, for, the, um, for also for our planet and for our bodies. So thank you and I urge and I vote on Senate Bill 543. Thank you. The question now rises upon the third reading and final passage of Senate Bill 543A. Those who have the opinion that the bill should be passed will answer aye as their names are called. Those opposed, no. The clerk will please call the roll. Gelser Bluen. Gerard. Golden. Gorsick. Hansel. Hayden. Jama. Canope. Lieber. Linthicum. Manning, Aye. Meek, Aye. Patterson, Przonski, Robinson, Brock Smith, Solman, Aye. Steiner, Aye. Taylor, Thatcher, Weber, no. Woods, Aye. Anderson, Aye. Bonham, no. Boquist, no. Campos, Dembro, Aye. Finley, Aye. Frederick, Aye. President Wagner, Aye. excused, Gorsick, voting nay, Bonham, Boquist, Gerard, Hansel, Linthicum, Robinson, Brock Smith, Thatcher, Weber, 20 ayes. Senate Bill 543A, having received a constitutional majority, is declared passed. <laughs> Colleagues, without objection, the remaining Senate measures will be carried over to the Tuesday, April 4th calendar. First reading of House Measures.